to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Well, in this video, I'm kind of doing more broad NFL, but in a way, it kind of relates to the Giants, how these teams will try to make trades and bring in these quarterbacks may take shape and may affect our draft position in this year's draft. Um, in addition to that, some of these quarterbacks may be going uh, from inside the division of the New York Giants. And how the quarterback carousel plays out will have a big, big impact on the 2021 season in the NFL. I want to give a quick shout out to Cox, one of my best subscribers, gave me the idea to make this video. So I wanted to make sure I gave, you know, gave him some props there. But when you really look around the NFL right now, and maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like this year in particular, the quarterback carousel is going to be insane. I came up with a list of 16 teams that I could legitimately see making a change at the quarterback position. Now, do I expect all these teams to make a change? No. I think some teams are more likely than most, but I would say at least 10 are probably definitive. And I also came up with a list of a bunch of quarterbacks that I could see going to different destinations. But in terms of the 16 teams, we'll start with some of the most likely. Uh, Washington. Washington, I think it is as clear as day, will have a new quarterback next year, whether it be in the draft or whether it be in free agency. They're picking 19th overall. We're going to get into their available cap space in a minute, but they're definitely one of the most logical teams that you would think would have a new quarterback. Of course, moving on from Dwayne Haskins, and Alex Smith does not look like near the quarterback that he once was. Some other teams in terms of high probability, of course, I misspoke in my last video, Phillip Rivers, of course, retired. So the Colts, who are now kind of a win-now team, I think they make some of the most sense for a team that may try to go out there and acquire a veteran rather than the draft. They're picking later in the draft, and they have a team that's equipped to win. So I could see them going the Phillip Rivers route, whether it's in free agency or whether it's via trade. But they're another team definitely to keep your eye on that may go out there and try to get an established quarterback. Some other teams that I think make sense, obviously the Jaguars are going to be taking Trevor Lawrence, so that will be an obvious change there at the top. Houston, all rumors have come out that Houston may have to move on from Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is not happy there. He's already come out with a list of teams that he'd like to be traded to. We're going to get into them more in this video, but of course if they trade him, they will have to bring another quarterback in. My guess would be if they were ultimately to trade Deshaun Watson, they'd probably draft the guy that is going to replace him, being that I think he will either go to a team like the Jets, possibly the Dolphins, and you'd be picking higher at the draft, and you'd have the ability to draft a guy like Justin Fields, potentially, to be your new franchise quarterback, but they more than likely will have a new quarterback at the end of this year. The Dolphins, there's been rumors there, you know, with the attachments potentially to Deshaun Watson, and they may, they, they may be one of the most favorable landing spots for Houston. Of course, the Dolphins, after some of the trades they've made, have a ton of draft capital, and if they want to move on from Tua, and that's the rumor from within inside the fan base that it's possible they may want to, that is another team that could potentially have a change at the quarterback spot. The Dolphins, of course, this year went 10-6, and six, but they may feel they're a win-now team. Maybe they don't fully believe in Tua, or maybe they feel like Watson is that much better. So that's a potential team. The Jets, like I just said, obviously, whether it's trading for a guy like Watson or whether it's bringing in a guy like Trevor Lawrence, of course, uh, not Trevor Lawrence, rather, Justin Fields or Zach Wilson, but of course, they still have Sam Darnold on their roster. So if the Jets decide to move on from Darnold, he becomes another quarterback that's out there on the open market that the Jets may be able to trade somewhere else that could be a starting quarterback. The San Francisco 49ers, word has it that they may not be in love with Jimmy Garoppolo. And if they're not, Garoppolo could be traded somewhere, and they may look to bring in a veteran. That's another interesting uh, instance there. The Carolina Panthers, Teddy Bridgewater, signed a three-year deal. They could probably get out after two, and if they were able to do that, they could cut him after this year. They may look to draft a quarterback. They're picking the top ten in this year's draft. The Saints, of course, Drew Brees has moved on. We'll have to wait and see if they decide to stick with Winston or try to bring in somebody via the draft or from the outside or potentially give Taysom Hill that job. The Atlanta Falcons have been rumored to potentially be looking to move on from Matt Ryan via trade, and he's another guy that could be out there to acquire. The Detroit Lions, the Green Bay Packers, and we're going to get into Aaron Rodgers and some of the things he had to say. The Chicago Bears, Mitch Trubisky is a free agent. Dallas and Philadelphia, not as likely, but possible. Dak, of course, is the biggest name in this year's free agency class. Dallas has struggled to get a long-term commitment with Dak. He's coming off an injury. He's coming off a franchise tag in which I think he made $32 million. And with the decreased cap, would Dallas be willing to give him a long-term commitment off the injury? And if they're not, would they will be willing to pay him $35 million or so on a second franchise tag. So there's a lot of questions to be answered that will shape this division. Philadelphia, of course, a new coach. You would think they'd stick with Wentz. Wentz coming off a horrible year. He doesn't carry a lot of trade value. He's making a lot of money. 
but it's possible. Maybe a trade like the Colts could make sense. But before we get into who could go where, I think you got to kind of look at cap space, right? With some of these quarterbacks that may be traded, well, you need the cap to be able to bring them in. And when you look at these top nine teams, Jacksonville is taking Trevor Lawrence. There's no debate there. The Jets, I think, could potentially be drawn to Deshaun Watson. There's been rumors there. Well, they have the second most cap space in all of football right now. The Indianapolis Colts, same thing. They need a quarterback. I think that is a perfect potential landing spot. The Patriots, they need a quarterback. That's another potential landing spot. I didn't even list the Patriots, so there's another team. So put, make it 17 teams. The Patriots will absolutely have another quarterback next year. The Bengals, of course, have Burrow. The Bucks. I think Brady will be back for another year. The Chargers, of course, have Herbert. The Dolphins are interesting. I think it would only be for Watson, much like the Jets and the Washington football team. Of those teams, the most likely to bring in an outsider, I would say, is the Colts, Washington, um, and the Patriots. I would say the Jets and Miami are less likely because they're picking uh, so high, and Miami drafted a quarterback last year in Tua. The only way I would see the Jets and Miami bringing in a quarterback not via the draft would be for Deshaun Watson. And those are the two most logical landing spots for me, with the Colts making sense as well. But those two make more sense if they're willing to do it because they're picking so high in the draft. So like the reports have been coming out, if Watson is to be traded, I would think it would be either to the Jets or the Dolphins. I think those are the two most logical landing spots, but there are several others that it could make sense. As far as Aaron Rodgers goes, Of course, Aaron Rodgers came out yesterday and he gave no guarantees that he'll be back with the Green Bay Packers. And if you're Rodgers, can you really blame him? This past year, they had an opportunity to go out there and get him a very good wide receiver in a rich wide receiver draft class. And instead, they drafted his backup. They gave him no no help. And then in the second round, they doubled down by picking a backup running back who's definitely going to be part of the future. But it didn't seem to Rodgers and to any NFL fan around the world that the Packers were thinking in the then and now. And for Rodgers, a guy coming off an MVP year, that's approaching 40, I think he's 37 years old, he wants to be with an organization that is thinking in the then and now and trying to win a Super Bowl with him as their quarterback. You look at a team like the Bucs with Brady, that's the type of situation I could see Aaron Rodgers going over to. And several quarterbacks have done it at the end of their uh, career. Brady, Peyton Manning, Joe Montana, you go down the list, some of the greatest quarterbacks who ever lived, Brett Favre, of course, from the Green Bay Packers. It may sound crazy right now, but trust me, it sounded crazy with those guys as well before it happened. I could absolutely see Aaron Rodgers potentially, if he forces his way out of Green Bay, landing somewhere else this offseason. If not this offseason, definitely the offseason after that. He clearly showed he's at the top of his game with 48 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. And if you're the Packers, and if you are truly trying to rebuild, this would be the time to trade Aaron Rodgers. Coming off a year like this, you would get maximum value. Even for a 37-year-old quarterback, you'd get a lot. Um, especially for teams that are look to winning right, looking to try to win right now. And where does it make the most sense? The Colts are a perfect spot for him, as well as the San Francisco 49ers. If you brought him there with Shanahan in that offense, he grew up in California. The 49ers passed him for Alex Smith, wanted to be a San Francisco 49er. We all remember draft night. Those two spots make a world of sense to me uh, for Aaron Rodgers. As far as other potential landing spots, I mean, I, I guess the Jets and Dolphins would listen, but I think they'd be much more you know, prone to try to bring in a guy like Watson if they were going to bring in somebody via trade, being that he's younger. And the, those other teams that I mentioned are kind of set up to win a Super Bowl right now uh, with the Colts and the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers had a lot of injuries this year, but you bring in a guy like Rodgers, he flips that thing real quick with that system with Shannon. They got good young receivers over there, um, you know, obviously with Debo and um, obviously Brandon Ayuk. So I think that could be a great landing spot for Aaron Rodgers. And if he is forced to leave, I would think that would be the team that he'd most logically want to go to. As far as some other potential quarterbacks that could be changing locations, we named the top two. That, of course, being Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun Watson. We didn't even get to some other huge names. You're talking about Matt Ryan with the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons, of course, are picking fourth overall. And word has come out from Atlanta that they'd potentially look to move on from Matt Ryan and Julio Jones as they're trying to start a rebuild and clear cap space so they could start to bring in younger talent. Well, if they were to do it, much like Rodgers, I think the 49ers make a ton of sense. Of course, Kyle Shanahan was Matt Ryan's offensive coordinator with the Atlanta Falcons, in which he had his greatest year. I think he won the MVP that year, went to the Super Bowl. We all remember the 28-3 game. But Ryan obviously had a lot of success under Shanahan. For the right price, I could see that being a match made in heaven. Matt Stafford, I've talked about him. As far as Stafford goes, I think Washington probably makes the most sense. I don't know if it'll happen, but the Lions and him have already agreed to part ways. Stafford is a very talented quarterback. Hasn't worked out in the NFL in terms of winning. 
But you look at Washington, from what I heard, I think their general manager was actually the guy who selected Stafford. They're in desperate need of a quarterback. And if you brought him over there, they'd be a, you know, you would think would be a much better team. A 32-year-old Matt Stafford is much better than Alex Smith at this point in his career. So that's another potential landing spot. Uh, Carson Wentz with the Philadelphia Eagles. I think when all is said and done, he will more than likely stick with the Eagles. Had they brought Doug Peterson back, I think I think Wentz would have forced his way out of there. I think he was gone had they brought Peterson back. It didn't seem like him and Peterson got along. The fact they made a coaching change and the fact that the coach they brought in comes from the Frank Reich School of Thought. Wentz, of course, had tremendous success under that system. I would think Wentz will probably stay on. Another big name and a guy that I'm not in love with, he's kind of a guy that a team, you know, maybe with limited cap space, might take a flyer on much like this year with the New England Patriots. One of my favorite quarterbacks of all time when he was at his best, that being Cam Newton. Who could bring him in? I don't know. Like I said, maybe a team with limited cap space that's looking for a guy that, you know, maybe a high upside guy that could bridge a quarterback if they draft one. Uh, Maybe the Broncos, if they decide to move on from a guy like Drew Locke. Who knows? You know, there's a number of other teams that may look to bring him in. Maybe the Packers, if they were to trade Aaron Rodgers. Maybe they have him to to mentor Jordan Love for a year. Maybe the Chicago Bears. The Bears, of course, very well could let Mitch Trubisky walk, who's another quarterback who may potentially be available. Trubisky this year had 16 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, and actually led the Bears to the playoffs for the second time in his career. But he's been a very underwhelming quarterback for the Bears, and he is a free agent. The question is, will the Bears retain him via the franchise tag or let him hit free agency and potentially land somewhere else? So those are some potential landing spots, and those are more quarterbacks. In terms of some other big names, Jameis Winston. Winston, of course, sat out this year as a backup with the New Orleans Saints. And where could Winston end up? Your guess is as good as mine, but if I had to guess right now, I would say he stays where he is. There's not much, if they give him the opportunity to start, there's not many better spots to be in the NFL than with the New Orleans Saints as a starting quarterback. The problem is, you look at the Saints' cap space, I don't know how they're going to afford to pay a lot of these guys on this list. They may have to go via the draft, but if they could keep Winston, I think it is the best spot for both Winston and the New Orleans Saints. Winston still has a lot of talent. The question is, does he fit Sean Payton's scheme very well? That will be remain, you know, that will remain to be seen. Some people have said Taysom Hill. Hill, of course, took over for Breeze um, after Breeze went down this year, and the Saints won some games. Even though I feel like Winston is the better passer, so Winston maybe he ends up in New Orleans, maybe he ends up somewhere else as a backup. But I definitely think he has way too much talent not to be given an opportunity somewhere else. Sam Darnold, if the Jets elect to draft a quarterback or trade for Deshaun Watson, Sam Darnold immediately becomes one of the most attractive features out there on the open market. Not because he's had tremendous success with the Jets, but because of his age. And I think some teams may still look at him only three years into his career as a guy that maybe they can mold into a starting quarterback. People forget he had a 7-6 and six year, uh, record with the Jets just a year ago before they traded away all their assets. I still think Darnold, in the right circumstances, I think there is a team or two out there that may be intrigued by him if you could bring him in you know, on on a good deal. And I don't think you'd have to give up too much. You're talking about a quarterback entering the fourth year of his rookie contract, maybe a second, maybe a third round pick. You look at what Josh Rosen got. They got, I think, a late second, early third after he was only one year into his career. You may be able to get something similar for a guy like Sam Darnold and maybe in the right circumstances, like Indianapolis, he could make sense. Of course, it's still very possible that he could stay with the Jets. There's rumors that have been coming out that the Jets potentially could look to trade down, stick with Sam, Try to get him some wide receivers and try to build that team properly. So it's going to be very interesting as the draft approaches. Tua, the only way Tua, in my opinion, would leave the Dolphins is if they traded, of course, for Deshaun Watson. If they don't, I think Tua sticks on. I think they could continue to try to build the team with him. Jimmy Garoppolo could stay with the 49ers. A lot of what I'm hearing is it's possible they'll be moving on. So I have to see there. I don't know how much interest Garoppolo would garner, but one potential very interesting landing spot would be the New England Patriots. What better place to go than back with Bill Belichick? We all remember how pissed Bill Belichick was when the New England Patriots went over his head and traded Jimmy Garoppolo away to the San Francisco 49ers. Is it possible if the Niners are done with Garoppolo, the Patriots do have cap space, they could potentially look to bring him back home where Belichick may feel he could get the most out of him. Of course, Garoppolo, while he was was there, had a winning record. He looked pretty good with the Patriots. It's why the Niners gave up what they did to acquire him. Next up, Dak Prescott. I think in the end, Prescott will stay with the Dallas Cowboys. I'd be surprised if he lands anywhere else, but he's definitely a name to monitor and is the biggest name on the free agency wire. The other being his initial backup, Andy Dalton. Dalton, I think, will test free agency and maybe a team similar to like a guy like Tyrod Taylor when they brought him in to mentor Baker Mayfield. I could see something like that for Dalton where he gets an opportunity to start somewhere, maybe for a team that drafts a guy like Zach Wilson or a team that drafts a guy like Mac Jones. 
Maybe he's a mentor for five, six weeks and gets to prove his value and gets an opportunity in the following season if he plays well. Dalton's a guy to keep your eye on. Same thing with Marcus Mariota. Um, I talked about Mitch Trubisky, and then in the draft, you have five prospects that could be going in the first round. That being Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and Mac Jones. So there is going to be a lot of quarterback turnover. You're talking about half the league. Washington, Philadelphia, Dallas, uh, the Bears, the Packers, the Lions, the Falcons, the Saints, the Panthers, the Niners, the Jets, the Dolphins, the the uh, Texans, the Jaguars, the Colts, and the Broncos all possibly could have a new quarterback next year. Do I think all of them will? No. I think Philadelphia and Dallas are less likely. I think they go into next year with Wentz and Dak more than likely. But a lot of those other teams easily could have a new starting quarterback next year. And a lot of that's going to come down to whether or not guys like Aaron Rodgers and whether or not guys like Deshaun Watson continue to be upset in the area that they're in. Because if they are, and they can force a trade, and believe me, it can happen, heads may roll. We'll have to wait and see how this offseason plays out, but I wanted to give my overall opinion on the quarterback carousel and talk about where I think some of these prospects could be headed and how it could possibly change the dynamic of this draft. I mean, as far as the draft goes, if some of these teams like the Jets trade with Houston, that could completely change the first, you know, seven picks of this year's draft. So it's going to be very interesting how this quarterback market manipulates the overall offseason and how it could have a potential effect on the New York Giants. If a team like Washington were to land a guy like Stafford, or if a team that traded with one of these teams gave up a quarterback like Watson, Got a, got a pick where we initially thought a quarterback could go, may take a wide receiver, and we may very well be upset on draft night. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But as always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.